Hello, hello, hello world. This is Shruti Pandey and we are here again for an another amazing podcast at Iti Shruti and you will not believe the amazing guest that I have with me today who happens to be an expert in the area of IT modernization, digital transformation, cloud computing, you name it. And he's seen, seen, the, seen it, been there, done that. So uh, very, very warm welcome, sir, uh, Mr. Chetan Walia, who holds 24 years of corporate experience in all the amazing areas that I spoke of. And today, while we celebrate his corporate journey, his expertise in different business domains from pre-sales to telecom to so many more, which we uh, uncover and discover and um, talk more about in today's conversation, we are also going to celebrate his new book that he has written which happens to be mastering cloud native microservices which happens to be a very very technical book for people who are uh, listening to this podcast and not just technical books sir is also an amazing amazing traveler a photographer and he has two photo co uh, coffee table books also published so okay. i think i will go on and on and this introduction will not end and i need to stop so thank you so much sir it's an amazing, amazing honor to host you on my podcast. Thank you so much, Shruti, and thanks for inviting me to your channel. It's uh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to talk with you and uh, to know more about you and uh, to discuss about my book, Mastering Cloud Native Microservices. I'm happy to share my journey so far. And uh, great. <laughs> I, I absolutely appreciate your honesty, sir, because that's what we do on Nitya Shruti, right? We uh, ask you questions about your journey. So my first question for you really is because from freshers to, you know, our, my age and uh, your generation and L, uh, more elder people would be listening to this podcast. And since you have all this amazing, amazing experience, my first question for you is exactly that. 24 years of cop corporate experience in the area of cloud computing, um, IT modernization, digital transformation. How has that journey been like for you? Yeah. Well, it's a great question to start with. Uh, so, you know, definitely, uh, you know, what I would say, I've been fortunate enough, fortunate enough to uh, work on some of the great programs, projects. Uh, I have worked with some of the best of the best people uh, in my career. And the learning you know, what you get from, you know, the exposure you get while working with those people and those programs, that's a tr tremendous opportunity. Uh, thanks to them uh, that I got all those exposures. And um, what we have been doing for last, uh, you know, couple of years, you know, specifically around the cloud and all, uh, we do end-to-end -end cloud services. Uh, when I say end-to-end, -end, it starts with the migrate. You migrate on to cloud, you operate, and you expand on cloud. Uh, so in a way, you know, when you migrate, it's not just a lift and shift kind of operation. You optimize your workload, uh, you know, to be more cost effective. Uh, you need to think of, you know, scalability features and you need to build in all the key parameters uh, so that, you know, your workload will be much more efficient while moving to cloud. And uh, when you move to cloud, obviously, uh, you know, when you move to cloud, not just lift and shift, but you make your application cloud native, it makes more sense. And with microservice architects, that's the best combination what we have today. And obviously, uh, you know, upcoming AI and ML, even though it's there for so many years, but the actual use case, how to implement, how to get benefit out of it, uh, is still going on. Uh, so that's what we are doing. And when we say uh, we operate, so you can't just migrate, but but you need to operate, you know, in terms of FinOps, you have, you have need to have a continuous process to cost optimize. And uh, when you, I talk about expand, building new application uh, with the latest architect, which will be purely cloud native on cloud. Mm -hmm. So that's what we have been doing so far. I think you have, uh, I mean, mm -hmm. myself being a technologist, I feel you have tried to make it so simple and easy and make the hard terms which we actually do in that entire transformation sound like a piece of cake for people who would be <laughs> listening this that oh my god it's so easy it's very achievable you just need to follow no, a couple of practices here and there you are right so basically in my company itself you know the key message is the simplicity uh you need to make uh, you know instead of creating a complex solution uh you need, you need to make it simple 
and uh, today we talk about digital transformation right uh, cloud is you know in center of any of the digital transformation you cannot think of a digital transformation without planning or thinking or adopting some part or you know completely to the cloud uh, so cloud is the key and with cloud you cannot you know the way we have mentioned uh, you need to think of the latest design pattern you need to see how to uh, you know how it will make more sense when you are moving to cloud right Right, right. And I want to switch gears a little bit here because your book also talks about all this experience that you hold. So I want to ask you, uh, like, isn't it difficult to write a book while managing work and life? I, I right. really want to understand from a perspective that how did you manage writing uh, a book and what really compelled you to write this book? Right. So <laughs> to be very frank, right, you know, when uh, I had no clue when I started. Um, you know, <laughs> the BPP publishing house, they approached me around a year back. Okay. And by the way, they are, you know, one of the best uh, in IT book publishing. They are the Asia's biggest publishing house for IT books. Uh, they approached me, uh, you know, my expertise, understanding, uh, looking at my profile. Uh, I was not very sure. Okay. Then I had a brainstorming kind of session with my brother. Uh, and basically there were two points what we have discussed. One. Do I, if I don't do this, what else I'm planning to do with that time? Okay. If I can do some better utilization of that time, then perfect. Let's not do that. Then, you know, invest somewhere else. Uh, right. The second thing that we have discussed, you know, my passion, obviously, you know, what we have discussed, traveling and all photography, but technology side, my passion is cloud. Cloud and microservices uh, and the modernization. That's what I have been doing for the last 10 years. Uh, so that's my passion. So if I'm not writing the who, you know, so... I believe, you know, I'm the best one to do that. Uh, from there it started. And definitely it's not an easy task, right? Uh, you have to start with creating an outline for your book. It's like a creating a detailed project plan, a, a chapter-wise detail, how it's going to be structured. Uh, you need to build a storyline because, you know, even though it's not a fiction, but still there needs to be a storyline. Uh, there needs to be a logical ordering of things, uh, how this, you know, so that readers can understand how things will, pull, you know, go in system. Uh, so it's not easy to build that structure. Once that structure is ready, then it's relatively easy to fill in the things. Uh, but another important thing is that how your book is going to differentiate it from other books available in the market. Uh, what would be the approach? You know, I thought of uh, delivering something as a practitioner approach, uh, giving, putting more of the real life examples of whatsoever is available in open market. Uh, so, you know, rather than just uh, dumping the code bases and, you know, making it too much technical, it, it's more about the strategy, how how you should implement, how you should adopt, uh, what are the best practices in industry. So eventually, uh, and and now when we have these copies, you know, one thing I can tell you, you know, uh, I feel that's the best decision I have done. Uh, it feels so good, right? You know, uh, I'm not saying uh, I should not use the word I'm feeling proud and all. Uh, but it feels so good when you have your book in your hand. So, and I have learned a lot, you know, to be very frank, I didn't, you know, in this book, there are 11 chapters. And while writing each of these chapters, I have learned a lot. Uh, because I, I, you know, I have to do a lot of, you know, I have to go through a lot of other documentations, uh, which we were not using in routine, right? Uh, there are a number of features which you, you don't use in each of the project right and then i have to scroll through all those features and to understand what best what the latest uh so it's a big learning opportunity for me it's a uh, it's an amazing amazing journey. i mean uh, i don't understand it i need to thank your modesty and honesty first because despite being in the uh area and experience and expertise you're still saying you had to research so people who are listening you need to buckle up you just can't think of right. stop learning. You need to keep learning as much as you can. And I feel really grateful to God or whoever is watching over me because, you know, that is my whole uh, mm. life purpose that if I am able to understand something and if I can't teach that thing very simply to other person, what's the point? And uh, right from the start of this interview, sir, to your book, like you mentioned, I think... Uh, I, I really get the same kind of people <laughs> on the podcast like myself and it totally makes sense. So if, if I were to ask you further, uh, maybe... Even, even before you go there, you know, a quick, uh, you know, uh, insight for the readers. Okay. Uh, you just need to take one step at a time. Okay. There is no need to think of, you know, I will do architect certification. I will do this and that, you know, you just need to take one step at a time. And this book or any other book for that matter... 
it's just a guiding line, right? It it, it tells you uh, what next, you know, what more you can uh, explore. Uh, but you know, you know, when once whatsoever, you know, when you start with uh, something new, or or if, even if you are working with something, just you know, uh, take one step at a time, add something more, and that's how it works. I think if we see more of corporate people writing more of books after listening to this, probably you are indirectly responsible for instigating <laughs> how to get to that. So it's it's really very inspiring to listen to the entire journey and how it really compelled you to write a book, sir. But I want to ask you one more thing because you have such extensive experience in telecom domain, right? And uh, given the fact we had all the evolution from 2G, 3G and so many Gs coming in between, what do you think would be the impact of 5G? I think you are you're the right person no, to ask a question like no, that. No, it's, it's a good question. Uh, it's uh, and very much relevant to your implied. So, you know, uh, basically one thing uh, as of now, in routine people don't understand that 5G is not about data speed. Uh, probably 5G, 6G and going forward whatsoever, right? You know, number we throw. Yeah. It's not about data speed. It's it's how we consume the data. Uh, usually, uh, let, let me give you a quick example, okay, uh, that will help you, help all of us to understand the concept. People watch IPL matches, uh, you know, over different channels on your mobile phones, on, you know, whatsoever, you know. Right. 5G can, what, what best it can do, it can deliver a 4K uh, resolution, <laughs> but that's not the point, right? The point is, you know, if consumer can control what he would like to view, for example, that match, you uh, you are just a fan of a particular player, a batsman or a bowler, and you want your camera angle to be focused on his, right? A close up, or you want a top of view, or you what you want a wide angle, or whatsoever. The moment you have a control, not not exactly what's being telecasted, but how you would like to view, or you want to replay something at runtime, you know, instantly. The moment you will have that kind of applications available, I'm not sure if, uh, those kind of application. It's just an example. But these can, kind of things are possible once you have that kind of bandwidth available. And coming to the cloud and technology side, uh, you know, for example, edge computing. Edge computing will obviously, uh, IoT we have been talking about, I think, for 10 years. I have not seen that much practical implementation. It, it, it was top technology for, you know, uh, most revolutionary thing, you know, for so many years, right? But now it will be effective because you have that bandwidth. To do that right you can connect n number of devices uh, through 5g so those things will happen now and so basically it's like you know getting a platform and now you know it's it's you know it's it's like that you know you give people an opportunity a platform a structure and then there will be people who are who will be innovating you know whether you do it or not doesn't matter someone will go and innovate the moment they have that opportunity or platform available so 5g is kind of that kind of a platform uh, which will help lot of app developers, lot of companies, lot of people uh, to come up with new ideas and uh, make a new gen, next gen app kind of thing. I think I also, So I hope that will help. <laughs> yeah, I think this is really very impressive if we are able to visualize data and information and what we see in the way you said. And I also agree to your point, which you mentioned very rightly that we're talking about IoT since so many years, but how, how much have we really done for it? And I feel that you know, the similar thing is for AI and ML also. Like, right, how much right. have we done for that area? And like, now it has become like a fluff word or marketing word that everything has to have AI, ML, and then that, that's how it it's will be. Each, each, each. <laughs> no, that's yeah. uh, to, to a certain extent. It's there in each and every uh, marketing presentation. Right. Uh, when you try to understand what models you have implemented, uh, how exactly it's going to help, uh, you know, it's, it's not clear. Uh, but it's, you know, uh, chat GTP is a very recent example. It's a big success. Okay. And it's amazing. It's working amazing. Okay. And if someone is having certain doubt, you can ask the question and it's certainly giving a uh, very mature answer. Uh, but, you know, it's just a start. Again, it's a kind of a platform and a lot of things will come up now. So, so let's see uh, what will happen in the next five years down the line. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes sense. I literally, given your expertise and your exposure, I had so many questions to ask to you, which is why I, uh, I mean, I usually keep three questions because, you know, people these days are so attention deficit. I don't want them to, you know, get bored of any conversation and I want them right. to 
to every word of what my guests say. But uh, I've created a special rapid fire section for you where uh, I hope uh, people will make the most of it because I've asked very important questions which people feel okay. We don't really understand the definition of it or things of it. And since I had you, I felt I should make a rapid fire section where I should ask you this. So are you, are you ready? So <laughs> I have three <laughs> rapid fire questions for you. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So my first question is, what are microservices? Okay, <laughs> so you know, what uh, did I ask you, right? Yeah, yeah, like, you know, <laughs> no, the question is correct. I'm thinking, you know, how to simplify it and uh, in a in a form for rapid fire. Uh, so you know, uh, let you know for understanding it thoroughly, please read my book. But you know, I will give you a quick answer. It's like <laughs> it's like you know, uh, resources or individuals with uh, specialization, right? They do specific tasks and and they they do it perfectly fine. Uh, let me give you a quick example how a microservices helped us. A Snapchat, a lot of uh, for our younger generation, like audience, who are, you know, they are using it <laughs> quite frequently. Uh, so it's completely based on the microservice architect on cloud, on AWS cloud. So the, there are microservices which will do image processing. There are microservices which will check authentication and security compliance and kind of things. There are different microservices which will, uh, you know, ship your... Uh, image to the you know source to the target basically uh, so and you know to, and for example that uh, snap it, it was a startup for a startup to build at that scale it's easy to do it on a cloud right otherwise to you know plan of that kind of scalability to have they had i think 300 plus million consumers or customers as of now and doing millions of uh, transactions per day uh, those things are feasible and you can scale a specific set of microservices as and when required runtime, right? And that's the power of microservices. I hope, you know, uh, that's how, you know, people will be able to relate it better. Absolutely, absolutely. It makes sense. But my second question is, how can you very simply explain what is a cloud native application to a layman? Okay. Uh, so, uh, basically... <laughs> Basically, I know, uh, this may sound very simple questions, but they these are not really very simple questions. The problem is, is problem is that questions are too simple. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, the cloud native microservices again. Uh, let me give you an example, uh, and it's an amazing example, right? Uh, we have all been through the COVID crisis, right? And uh, in India, the COVID vaccination drive, it's a, it's an amazing success. It's a big success because to do a vaccination drive for 1.3 billion, that time 1.3 billion, uh, you know, uh, end users, uh, and they need to register themselves. And then there are microservices, cloud native, which can, you know, probably thousands of registration per minute, right? Thank and you. how to control it, how to link it with the Aadhaar, with the, which is our UID, and how to, you know, ship those certifications that uh, you are certified. You know, you can free, you are free to go anywhere. So that thing has been done successfully and the, at, the, at an amazing speed. And it, the solution has been rolled out to all over India. It's an amazing thing, right? So that's that's the power of cloud native. So cloud native solutions are easy to build. It's It doesn't mean it's, you know, you don't have to code. But it's easy to scale. It, it will be able to address that. Uh, and you don't have to invest heavily to start with, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, though this was simple, I, I had kept this question because remember a couple of years back, there was a leader who was telling on a national television like news channel where he, he thought that a cloud is really a cloud. And uh, it was such a big blunder and meme and joke. So I specifically thought of asking this question to you because <laughs> in case there are people who think that, that this cloud is that cloud, that is not the thing. And it's such a big joke if, we, if you're thinking of that thing. So yeah, I hope you get the picture now. My last question for you, uh, sir, is what do you mean by next-gen app? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Again, it's a good question. You know, it's simple but really good question. Uh, even in my tagline, right? I'm I'm mentioning uh, this book will help design and implement cloud native microservices for next gen app. Oh, so you know, people give fancy definitions for next gen app, uh, generation application and all. Right. You know, 
what we need to understand is that our competition, you know, uh, our competition is a click away. See, whatsoever I'm doing or my company is doing or or if you have a shop or whosoever is doing whatsoever, right? Mm -hmm. In today's world, it's a click away. You know, you are not able to provide some service or you are not up to mark, they will simply move to uh, your competition. The idea is to, you know, build an application which is easy to use. It's, it needs to be very simple. You need to, you know, user don't need a training, right? Uh, we don't give training uh, for individuals or, uh, you know, our kids to how to operate or how to play a game or how to use mobile. So next gen application needs to be very easy with a very simple way. And uh, then it they need to be very much secure. Mm -hmm. So the three keywords, you know, I was there in an ASCOM conference uh, last last year and uh, we were talking about the key three things which is cloud collaboration and cyber security so cyber security should be the key right uh when everything is on cloud you know even though they are secured uh but you need to make sure that your applications are secure enough your data in transit or data in rest it needs to be secure and, and moreover you know that compatibility with all different platforms uh, mm -hmm. Because, you know, today, if you think the user base is the key, the application should be able to, you know, it should be easy enough to plug in wherever it's required. Mm -hmm. So that's the, you know, a high level of simple definition for, for our next gen applications, uh, which will help all of us, right? <laughs> yeah. um, I think uh, there was so much to learn from this one conversation that I had with you right from how to write a book, <laughs> how you yeah. utilize so, so many years, specifically 24 years in your case of experience and what you have learned out of it, uh, impact of 5G. And uh, while those sound basic definitions, but I'm pretty sure many technologists, younger, mid-generation, next generation, older generation still don't understand the mm -hmm. actual definitions of things. So I really appreciate it, sir, that you, you put this entire conversation in such a digestible format that it makes sense to me and hopefully to the users as well to understand. If you have any parting thoughts before we close this conversation, uh, I would really appreciate that. No, oh, what I would say, you know, thank you so much, Ruthie, for your time. And, uh, you know, what you have been doing is an amazing, amazing, amazing work, right? It, you are giving a platform for individuals to come and talk. And uh, it, it's, it's, you know, in a way, um, knowledge sharing platform, right? Uh, you are, in a way, motivating a lot of other individuals uh, to do a number of things in their life, right? So, <clears throat> great work. Uh, keep it up. And uh, to all my readers, so, you know, go ahead uh, and, uh, you know, this book is specifically designed in a simple way, uh, but it, it starts from a very basic and to go to a very advanced level. So I hope it will help you guys. I, I, I do hope that it will hope for all the people who read it and many more congratulations, sir, for your book and hoping the Thank best you so much. for it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me to your uh, channel. Great. It's uh, nice talking to you. Same here, sir. Thank you so much.